The most requested and the most awaited video is here. What is an update on my toes? Y'all saw the crusty and dusty look of them. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna start off by using my e-file at a speed of 10,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using a five in one bit and we are going to be filing them until there is little to no acrylic on my toenails. Now update on my big toe, there's a lot of lifting. So I'm gonna at least try to get all that lifting off and then we're gonna go in with some gel products. So I did this for research purposes and to update you guys on my thoughts and how I feel about acrylic toenails. Now in the original video, if you guys didn't watch that, definitely go check it out and read the comments in the comment section because they were very, very informative. And it kind of gave me a little bit of insight with my acrylic toes that I had just done. So. I did a pretty basic pink acrylic base and then we went in with our French toe design. I will definitely say that a lot of the comments that I got from you guys were saying that it was like the worst thing that you guys have ever done. Y'all got a lot of lifting, they hurt with closed toed shoes, a bunch of very informative type of comments. So definitely thank you because I kind of went in knowing what I should expect. 100% agree with the lifting i don't know what maybe because i was doing them on myself you kind of get the gist of like i'm not able to do my prep properly i'm also not able to like fully not flood the cuticles because i'm doing them on myself and the way that my foot is angled it's literally prone for flooding in the cuticle area so not quite sure where i went wrong but i definitely got a ton of lifting as you can see here i'm just taking my five and one bit and i'm actually following that acrylic line of lifted area and i'm focusing on that area and filing it until it's super super thin and i can just kind of flake it off so that's pretty much what you see me doing here in this portion i'm trying to thin it out as much as possible once you get it super super thin you're able to just kind of grab the lifted area and break it off and you'll see me do that here it's so satisfying to get lifted areas off um, i do have a little bit of damage underneath on my natural nail i did smack my big toe so i think that is where the lifting came from along with just like day-to-day -day wearing close toe shoes it is a little bit colder now so i've been wearing a lot of sneakers tennis shoes and all that good stuff so that might have a lot to do with it as well i'm just gonna try to debulk this as much as possible thin it out i'm not fully removing the acrylic because i still want some strength on that toenail i've mentioned it before my big toes are the ones that are always 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 breaking because i always smack them on something now i will say for reference i lost two of my toenails <laughs> i don't know when or where but that's pretty freaking disgusting to me not even gonna lie i was so grossed out at the fact that i lost a toenail and then the other one ended up coming off i think i like pulled it off so i had an event to go to and i ended up just putting some gel polish as my base and then i did the french design with gel polish products that's why you don't see any toenails missing and it's because i fixed the two that broke off definitely not the best prep that i've done i typically always have like my toenails intact when i go in to redo them mind you this has been a good minute since i did them but 10 out of 10 i do not recommend acrylic on the little toes on the big toes i don't think it's bad as long as you're not smacking them around like i do um so i don't know if that's kind of helpful or not This pinky toe, y'all see me just ripping it off. Do not recommend this. Do not do it at home. I just felt like because it was barely hanging on there, I could just pull it off versus having to go in there and file, file, file until I got that little corner off. Now, pretty disgusting. Not even gonna lie. I cringe all the time every time I do my toes on camera for you guys, but I know that you guys appreciate this type of content. So here we are being very vulnerable in front of a camera for the sake of the video. So I'm gonna be going in with my hand file now, and I'm actually gonna be trying to thin that out a little bit more, blending that acrylic into my natural nail as best as possible. I went ahead and trimmed them with my e-file. Now I'm gonna go in and just thin them out, square that tip off, and I'm actually taking my straight edge 
nail cutters and I'm gonna be trimming those I typically trim these very very often when I have gel polish but because I had acrylic you can't easily trim that without having to do any filing so I just kind of let them grow out no one really was seeing my toes so I didn't think it was that big of an issue otherwise I would definitely be trying to do something with them now we're going in with a sanding band and mandrel bit at a speed of 4,000 rpms I'm using a fine grit sanding band of course and I'm gonna go in with very light pressure I'm gonna start buffing off the shine from the natural nail also pushing back that cuticle area to expose a little bit more of my natural nail surface remove any dead skin from those areas but yeah, pretty much that's the gist of it all. I definitely love the look of it. They looked really, really good. Loved the French on that acrylic set. It just looked so clean and super, super straight. Super adorable, I thought. But just the upkeep of it, like I said, if I were to be doing it on another person, maybe the longevity of it would be a lot better. The retention of that acrylic would have been a lot better because I'm able to do it a lot easier than versus on myself. But I don't know, y'all. Definitely didn't like it. I'm going to stick to my gel products and we're just going to let that acrylic kind of grow out. I'm definitely glad that I didn't get any greenies under there because I did have a lot of lifting and I did not take it off. So here we are now we're going in with this diamond bit fully removing that dead skin from that cuticle area and i'm also pushing back that cuticle once again And I'm going to be going in very quickly with my cuticle bobbit from Profiles Backstage. And we're going to be buffing off that dead skin from the area. I'm not trimming anything off because I do upkeep my toes quite a bit. So honestly speaking, I don't have a lot of growth in that area. And I feel like I fully get it off with my cuticle bobbit. For reference, my eval is still at 4,000 RPMs. Very light pressure when I'm doing this process. If you do feel like it's not fully coming off, go ahead and up your speed to 5,000 RPMs and add a little bit more pressure and that should do the trick. Now just some more insight, another one of the comments that I got a lot was that it hurt with closed toed shoes. At first it didn't, but obviously as they start growing out, they get longer and yes, in fact, they did bother me a little bit. It wasn't painful, like to the point where I wanted to cut them off or I wanted to wear open toed shoes. Definitely not the case, they did just slightly get sore from time to time depending what I was doing throughout the day, so just for reference, the thicker they are, the longer they are. Obviously, it's going to cause discomfort with closed-toed shoes, especially if you're wearing shoes that are very fitted to your foot. Now, we're going to be going in with this beautiful BB gel. I have been loving BB gels. I used it on my husband. If you guys didn't see that video, definitely go check that out. When I did his manicure, I used the clear one. This one is a, such a beautiful natural pink color, which is perfect for French nails, so I figured I would go ahead and use it. I'm just going to be curing that very quickly before I go on to the next nails. I'm going to be adding a pretty thin to medium layer of this product. Definitely recommend to prime your toes, but because I feel like my typical gel polish on my toes stays pretty good, I wanted to test it out without a primer. I typically do not put primer on my toes, and it lasts pretty good, so we will be testing this one out. I love testing stuff for you guys, so we shall see, and I will update you guys in my next toe video. But this is such a beautiful pink. I love the thickness of the gel. It's very, very easy to apply. This is really good for thin nails. Like if you just want to add a little bit of extra strength without actually putting acrylic on there, 10 out of 10 recommended. And especially for toes, I feel like it's a really good addition instead of doing acrylic. Y'all know I'm not about that anymore. So definitely really love the color and the product itself. Curing that in the light for a full 60 seconds. We're going to be taking it out of the light. And I'm going to be doing a second coat just on my big toe for purposes of adding extra thickness and also kind of covering out that acrylic underneath. The second coat is going to be a little bit more opaque and that's pretty much what I want as my base color.
We're going to be curing in the light again for a full 60 seconds. You want to make sure that you cure those layers properly. Next, we're going to be going in with our nail art. I decided to do a fun Christmas design for my toes. I typically don't do designs, especially not hand painted. I've done little decals and stuff, but it is a little bit hard to get down there. If you know what I'm saying, I know you guys do. If you've tried to do your toes, that is like back breaking. You get cramps and stuff if you don't drink your water like me. It is not fun. So I was struggling, not even gonna lie. We're gonna be doing a white French toe on all of the nails and I'm gonna be doing a really cute design on my big toes. So for reference, I am using my Not Polish Nail Art brush. Definitely wish I would have brought my longer bristle one, but this one did really, really good as well. It's just a lot shorter. And I am using the white frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage. And I'm just gonna be doing a very thin tip design here very quickly and then we're going to be curing that in the light before we go in with the next nail art i actually went ahead and put my paints on top of the kiara sky light because if you guys didn't know it is acetone resistant so palette wear i'm going to go ahead and use that and i'll just go ahead and wipe it off afterwards I'm gonna be going in with, this is actually a cuticle pusher, but the side is like nice and pointy and I didn't have a dotting tool, so I figured I would go ahead and use this. You could also use the back end of a brush or whatever you have, bobby pin, something just really tiny will do the trick. Or you can always just use a brush as well, but it can be a little bit more complicated. We're gonna be doing like a candy cane type of little design. So I'm starting off with my red. This is a red liner from Profiles Backstage. And then once that is cured, remember to cure for 60 seconds. I'm gonna be going in with the white and going in between. And then you got like a perfect little cute dotted candy cane striped red and white little design in a smile line. I think it was like such a cute little detail to add. So I don't know, give it a try. Super easy to create also. Curing that once again for 60 seconds. I'm gonna be going in now with a half of a snowflake and I'm gonna be bringing it up from that cuticle area. Three little lines, always one down the center, two 45 degree angled ones. And I always try to do the 45 angle ones pretty much shorter. Don't know why, that's just like how my brain works, but I have noticed that I've been doing that and they're definitely a lot shorter. And then we're just gonna be adding in those tiny little details. I'm trying to be as perfect as possible, especially being in the position that I am and not being able to bring my toe all the way up to my face, but I think that I did a pretty good job and it turned out pretty cute for me struggling in that position. We're gonna be going in again with all the little details, same brush, same gel paint, and then placing that in the light for a full 60 seconds. Here I'm just quickly admiring my work and seeing if I need to fix anything or add anything. Then we're gonna be placing that in the light. This would also be a really cute design for like a short manicure or like a short almond set. Definitely more on the elegant side than the crazy nail arts that I typically do. Now we're going in with that same French smile line on the rest of the toes. I'm gonna be leaving all of those pretty much the same. I didn't wanna add any more nail arch just because it's such a small surface and I feel like I wanted the big toe to stand out in comparison to the rest. I'm 
going to be going back into the light for 60 seconds. Once we are out of the light, I'm going to be going in with my top coat. Definitely would have loved to use the stain resistant top coat from Young Nails. I typically use that on toes, white sets, or very light colors because it does definitely help against stains but I didn't have it with me. So we're going in with my next favorite top coat, which is the Glossit Top Coat from Not Polish. That one is my go-to for all my regular shiny sets if I don't need it to be stain resistant. Once we're out of the light, I'm gonna be going in, filing that tip once again. This is my personal preference. I love filing it afterwards. I try to avoid the tip at all costs when I'm doing a full set of nails. I just feel like it distorts the shape. And if you guys have noticed that your tip is all wonky, that's probably why. Just give it a good wipe and then file it if you need to. So I'm just going to go in very lightly, squaring that off to bring that shape nice and crisp. Adding some cuticle oil, I'm using Sweet V from Profiles Backstage, which is my signature scent. And that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton. And I'll see you guys next time.